what's going on guys in this lesson we'll be looking at observation techniques now us as researchers can either use participant or non-participant observation let's explore these in more detail participant observation is when the researcher actually participates in the activity that is being studied an advantage of this method is that the researcher gains a greater understanding of the group's behavior as a relationship is built with the group. On the flip side of that, a disadvantage is that the participants may act differently knowing the researcher is amongst them and the researcher themselves loses objectivity as they have become part of the group. And as you've probably guessed, non-participant observation is when the researcher observes without getting involved. An advantage of this is that the researcher can remain objective throughout the study. This can, however, lead to the researcher losing touch with the group dynamics as a disadvantage. Both participant and non-participant observations can be either overt or covert. Covert observations are where the researcher's presence is unknown to the participant, like a ninja hiding in the shadows. This leads to the potential advantage of participants being more likely to behave naturally whilst the disadvantage would be the ability, or should I say difficulty, in gaining ethical approval. Overt observations are the opposite. This is where the researcher's presence is obvious to the participants. An advantage is that this method is far more ethically sound as participants are aware of the research. As you may have anticipated regarding a disadvantage, as the participants know of the research, they may change their behavior in response to that knowledge. Researchers can also choose to control the conditions of the observation. These often take place in a laboratory, like Bandura's Bobo doll study, and are called controlled observations. Advantages of this method include the ability to produce strong supporting evidence for establishing cause and effect. Also, it is possible to replicate the study to check results are reliable. Controlled observations have far lower ecological validity than, say, naturalistic observations, this is a disadvantage. Another is the potential for participants to adjust their behavior as they know they are being observed. Naturalistic observations take place in the natural environment rather than in a lab like with controlled observations. These involve making design decisions, implementing structure to ensure no behavior is missed. Let's take a look at some of the ways we can do this. When it comes to recording data, we can simply take written notes if we want qualitative data, but for a more accurate record, it is best to make audio or video recordings. When observing, we, as researchers, must have a clearly defined understanding of what and how we are going to observe. We do this by identifying how we sample, rate and categorise behaviour. Sampling behaviour requires you, the researcher, to decide on how long and how often you're going to observe the participants. Event sampling is when you only record the specific events that you're interested in and ignore all other behaviours. An advantage of this method is that the researcher will know exactly what they're looking for, but a disadvantage could be that potentially interesting behaviour can be completely overlooked. Time interval sampling is when the researcher only observes a behaviour over set time intervals. Now this can be very convenient for the researcher to carry out but keep in mind that interesting behaviours may occur outside of the sample interval time, meaning it won't be recorded. When it comes to categorising behaviour, you must define the behaviour you intend to observe, identifying exactly what counts as that behaviour. You must give an operationalised definition. There may be times when the behaviour you intend to observe is a matter of levels or degrees. In this instance, you may need to use a rating scale to classify the behavior. You could divide the participants into categories or use a type of coding system where each participant is assigned a number in correlation to the extent to which they display the behavior you are observing. You'll still need to define the behavior you are observing. When you rate behavior in this way, quantitative data is provided. Hopefully this gives you guys a better understanding of observation techniques in psychology. Make sure you karate chop that subscribe and fly kick that like button if you haven't already. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.